But my perspective changed when I moved from the city ah, to an organic farm in rural British Columbia with reduced income, no fancy stores to shop in, and no access to big city services like garbage removal, my relationship and lifestyle with money changed. I learned that being a little unconventional can add up to a lot of savings. What I'm gonna share with you guys today is not a set of rules. It's a new perspective, it's a new mentality, and it's definitely challenging all the conventional consumerism we seem today. There are no secrets to saving money. We all build wealth one dollar at a time. So there's no shortcuts, you have to do the work. But by sharing the financial lessons I learned while living on a frugal farm, I want to challenge you to see building wealth as so much more than balancing, balancing a budget. And this is how you do it. What do you collect? So collections scare me. <laughs> when I see like all these collectibles grouped together, like coins or stamps, I can't help but add up the cost to all that stuff. So I got a little snarky one day and I posted to Twitter. I said, don't collect the whole set. Heck, don't collect. I thought this was a great money saving tip. And the response I got was huge. People started sending me pictures of all their collections. So I got like pictures of baseball caps and um, yarn, people collect yarn. One woman sent me a photograph of her discombobulated doll head collection. <laughs> I said, that's really creepy. And <laughs> she defriended me immediately. Um, but yeah, also, you know, train sets. So I'm looking at all these photographs and I'm like, wow. It made me rethink what a collection was because none of these collections had limited editions. A collection is just a stash of stuff. And everyone seemed to have one. So I thought, huh. Am I a collector? What is it I collect? So I went searching around my house for the evidence. I started in the basement. I went up the stairs. I went through the living room, in the kitchen. So far, so good. High five. I go into the bedroom. I open up my closet. And there it was. <laughs> my wacky stack of denim. I own 30 pairs of blue pants. Now, I had many reasons why I collected so many pairs of jeans. I mean, there's different sizes, different washes, different lengths, different cuts. I mean, I love my denim. I could go on forever. But on the farm, I only needed a couple pair. This collection was put together during my city girl days. My eyes were opening. And then I remembered the barn. Back in the 1920s, the barn was home to the charming Christensen family. Today, the barn is home to this, my relic computer collection, a bunch of junk from the 1990s. I mean, you can just hear those almond towers connecting to the information superhighway. I won't make the sound. But it's expensive junk, right? Collections are expensive. The cost could be the amount you paid to buy the stuff, but the cost could also be the amount you pay to store it. If you don't have a charming family barn, then maybe you need to mortgage a bigger house or rent a larger <laughs> apartment or maybe, just maybe, you rent a facility on the off-site called a storage facility and you have 24 access, our access to your stuff. But yeah, collections are expensive. So with my eyes opened, I made the vow to myself that I was going to collect dollars and not stuff. But why do we collect? I mean, it's not like I set out to spend money on 30 pairs of blue pants, right? Well, there's a lot of reasons why we buy stuff, but I think a lot of it is this, impulse buying. Impulse buying is the misfortune of the saver. It's really easy to spend money, isn't it? I mean, stores are set up for savers to fail, and marketers are brilliant at getting us to spend the money we didn't know we wanted to spend. Walk into any store and you'll see, you'll walk right in, you'll see a, a, a big you know, um, display of products to purchase. Then there's the sales, and then there's the loyalty points. Hey, are you a collector? And then you go to buy your thing at the checkout, and then there's checkout displays, so many enticing things to purchase. It adds up to a lot. This is where we impulsively spend our money. Clothing, dining out, shoes, books and magazines. I mean, the list goes on. And this is how much we're spending. Canadians spend 3,720 bucks per year on stuff they want but don't need. It's crazy. It's a lot of money. 
And that's just one person. If you're married, then your spouse and you are spending close to $8,000 on impulse purchasing. <laughs> yeah. But my challenge on the farm wasn't to spend less money because there were no stars in town. My challenge was actually looking in my trash, trash can. My challenge was to produce less garbage. And if you aim to produce more gar less garbage, you will save a ton of money. And this is especially true in Canada because Can Canadians produce more garbage than anyone else. We are trash-tastic. <laughs> we really are. In 2009, um, Stats Canada found that the average Canadians um, created about 777 kilograms of garbage per person per year. That's amazing. And a big chunk of that tasty trash used to be good enough to eat. That's right. We Canadians are trashing and garbaging our groceries. It adds up to a lot. Food waste costs families up to $1,800 per year. That's $417 per person. It's like saying food is so plentiful, let's just throw it away. That's food for thought. But by living on a farm, I saw firsthand how much effort it took to produce food. It's backbreaking labor. So by knowing better, I decided to do better, and I kept a food waste diary, I shopped with a grocery list, and I did meal planning so that I was ensured to use all my ingredients before they spoiled. It's really simple stuff, it's not rocket science. Yet we're not doing it. And I don't understand why, because I have better use for $1,800 a year. You probably do too. Another thing I, I aimed to do was reduce the amount of disposables that went into the trash can, because disposables are a very costly expense. So the first thing I got rid of was paper towel. I invested money in cloths, and they're about 28 cents a piece, and I've been using them for years. I've saved thousands. You just put them in the hot water wash, done. But it's true, I've saved thousands of dollars by not spending my money on disposable products. By being a sustainable consumer, I invest in quality, not in trash. Sustainable consumers save money. The next item I got rid of was disposable diapers. My daughter wasn't even two weeks old, and we were going through 10 of these things a day. And I was like, wow, I did the math, and I, decided, and I discovered I'd have 7,000 diaper changes in my future. At first, I cried. <laughs> and then I made the commitment to use cloth diapers. And since she was born from her age of potty training, I've saved over $2,000 by using cloth. And there's the second-hand economy that hugely supports buying used cloth diapers. So I sold my whole stash for 50% at cost. Try doing that with your disposable diapers. <sighs> Ew. <laughs> Yeah. So let's let's go past <laughs> sorry. Let's go past hygiene and cleaning products for now. <laughs> let's look at these guys, packaged food, snack food, beverages. I mean it all adds up. I don't understand what a coffee pot is. It's basically something you buy and then throw out, right? It's disposable. I could make you a cup of coffee using a reusable filter for 61% less. Brew four cups a day, that's over $600 a year. And that's using the exact same coffee in this coffee pod thing. But these things are littering the earth. They're not designed to be recycled. Very few of them are. So it's a real shame. And if you want to save even more money, then just use a coffee press, a French press, right? Avoid buying that costly machine. But yeah, so snack foods, packaged products, disposable items, it all adds up to cost. Why are we throwing our money in the trash? Well, we all like clothes, right? I see some people here are dressed. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's talk about the clothing on our backs. The average household spends $3,350 a year on clothing. Way to go. It's a lot of money, I know. The problem is we're not keeping it in our closets. We're trying to get rid of it. We're trying to donate it. And this is what it's doing to the secondhand stores. They get too much of it. They're bursting at the seams with the amount of used clothing they're getting. They can't sell it. No one wants to buy it. And the reason, because it's disposable duds. We're blowing our cash on trashy clothing. It's, it's poor fabrication. It's cheaply made. It falls apart after a few washes. It's a real shame. It doesn't need to happen. But I have a solution. 
that will build you a better wardrobe and save you thousands of dollars over your lifetime. And that's to buy 80% of your clothing used and 20% new. You'll save quite a bit. This is how farmers shop. This is how my father-in-law shops. This is what we did on the farm. Farmers are frugal people. They hardly buy anything new. So when my daughter was born, I used this rule because I wasn't about to let her lengthening limbs bankrupt, bankrupt me. I hit up the thrift store and I was like, oh wow, score. These same pair of jeans cost like 25 to $35 new. I'm like, well, she doesn't care. She's just glad they're pink. <laughs> I like the secondhand economy so much, I shop there myself. Everything I'm wearing today is used. Okay, my knickers and my knackers are new, but you know, my shoes, my dress, it's all bought used. And it's okay, because when I went to buy them in the store, they still have the tags on them. So people have consumeritis, they buy a ton of stuff and never use it. So heck, I'm gonna benefit from that, why not? Go me. <laughs> So yeah, clothing, disposable stuff. <sighs> I'm going to get a little mean now. Sorry, I've been really nice up until now, but I'm going to get mean. And I'm going to tell you it's not savings unless you save it. It's not. So let's play a little game. Okay, ready? You see a sale for 60% off. You buy a pair of jeans for 100 bucks, And then I cry because I like new jeans too. <sighs> How much did you save? Oops. How much did you save? See, I'm not that mean. <laughs> How much did you save? Well, you saved nothing, right? You've spent 40 bucks. Ha! Don't delude yourself in thinking you're saving when, you, when you've really spent money. Saving is not about spending less. Saving is about putting money aside. See, it's all perspective when it comes to saving money. And we need that perspective, because our savings rate is abysmal. We used to save between 10 and 15% between the 70s and the 90s. These days, we're saving 3.6%. We can do better. I know you can do better. Let's do better. I have a trick that might help. The trick in the game, well, it's a little bit of a game. It's called, how much does it really cost? It's a fun game to play. I play this game a lot when I write articles. I like to know how much things cost. So when I move back from the farm, to the city. I noticed everyone in Toronto was wearing the same coat. I was like, well, what's up with that? It must be some mighty fine coat. I'm going to go check it out. So I tried it on. I'm like, well, it's quite the coat. I looked at the, the um, tag on it. It said $700 coat. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of money. I don't understand it. You know? So I wrote an article and I said, hey guys, can you explain to me this $700 coat? Is it really worth it? And the debate went crazy. I mean, the story went everywhere. It was hundreds of comments. People all over Canada commented on this coat. People all over the world who were aware of it commented as well. And the debate went across two sides. The first side was, we love our coats. It's Canadian made. It's made of amazing fabrication. You spend the money, you'll have it for a long time. It's worth the price. The other half of the debate was, not worth it. You're paying for a brand. You can get a comparable coat for a heck of a lot less money. And I went, huh, reading through the comments. Made me think. Because not one person thought of looking at the cost of the coat in terms of the hours they needed to work to earn it. And that's because the true measure of cost in life is the person hours work to buy something. It's a lesson I learned from my father-in-law the boss who runs the farm I lived on. For him and his currency, he looked at how much cattle he needed to sell to buy something. Perspective is everything. In farmer cur currency, you could buy two puffy parkas for one calf. Or you could buy 88, you could buy one puffy parka with 88 bales of hay. Now, I don't know, have you guys ever lifted a bale of hay? It's really heavy work. Um, by the way, dog's not included in the price. I'm keeping my dog. But I know farmer currency is a little bit, you know, unconventional. It's a little bit different. You know, most of us earn cash for a living, so let's look at cash. Let's say you make 60 grand a year. Go you. 
but you don't get to keep all of it. The government takes a chunk, so you bring home $48,000. Go government. You work 40 hours a week, so your rate is 23 hours of work. Sorry, $23 per hour of work. See, it, I stumble on it because I can't believe how much little we earn for work. It's so sad. It's the government's fault, right? But it's like, my goodness. So how many hours do you have to work in order to earn a puffy burka? Right? Let's look at this. Any guesses? I'll just tell you. It's 30 hours of work. Seems like a lot. For someone else, that might be a little bit of work. It depends, right? Is a puffy perka worth 30 hours of work? That's up for you to decide. It's your money. I'm not going to tell you how to spend it. But it's changing the perspective of how you see money, about how you see your currency. And it's about choosing where you're spending your money and where you're not. So there you go. Hours worked. Now, don't feel bad if you don't have a puffy perka or if you don't have 88 bales of hay. It's heavy, right? You don't want to carry it with you to the, to the conference. <laughs> because it's really not about how much you make. It's about how much you don't spend, right? Some people earn a lot and blow it all. <laughs> Some people earn modest amounts and save a lot. It's about perspective. It's about lifestyle choices. There's a lot more to saving money than just balancing a budget. And you don't need to move to a rural farm to see the savings. You know, by changing your perspective, by looking at how you spend your money, and by choosing to invest your currency by buying items that aren't disposable because no one wants to throw out their cash, then you too can see the savings. So, by embracing a few unconventional ways to save, both your financial bottom lines and our environmental bottom lines will be so much wealthier. Thank you.